get you up to speed on the latest in sports. I'm Denise Tan. Gilas gets a favorable development on Kai Soto and Scotty Thompson but endured bad news on Poi Aram's injury. Here's the story. Looks like the stalemate between Kai Soto and the Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas has been resolved. During the Philippine Sports Writer Association Forum, SBP President Al Panlilio revealed that Soto's camp has talked to the SBP's doctors yesterday. Upon assessment, Soto has been cleared to play in all full contact practices with Gilas. Our doctors spoke yesterday, the doctors of, of Kai and the SBP doctors, and he's been cleared to play. He's been cleared to play. So. Um, um, that's good news, right? So he's been cleared to play, and uh, again, we're looking forward that uh, you know we see him play also during the the friendlies. With this, he will be allowed to participate in the national team scrimmages without restrictions. Soto's full contact training had been hampered by a back injury he sustained during his NBA Summer League campaign last month. The SBP had imposed a no medical clearance, no play rule on Kai as he continues his rehab because of the injury. He had been joining the squad session but with limitations. The team has 10 days to smoothen out all rough edges and be at their best shape heading into the FIBA World Cup. This development on Soto couldn't have come at a better time as Scotty Thompson had been cleared to rejoin the team. Thompson, expected to be one of the team's key players, has missed a few weeks due to a metacarpal fracture on his right hand. The former PBA MVP's experience and skill set on both ends of the floor will be key in Gilas' World Cup campaign. Everybody was there. Kai was there, Scotty was there, uh, JC was there, so, so the whole 16 uh, I think certain players were all, were all there. No? Scotty has been, uh, is fit, you know, I guess just a matter of getting back to the groove of basketball, playing basketball, but, but he, did, he did play uh, that night. Meanwhile, tough news for Gilas and TNT Tropang Giga fans. Poi Eram will miss six to eight months after undergoing surgery on his right knee. Eram said he sustained a torn MCL, a swollen cartilage, and bone spurs. This was also the reason why Eram had to retire from Gilas despite being included in the pool for the World Cup. He had even played with the team during their two-week training camp in Europe that began in late June. In line with that, local organizers said that the Philippines is 95% ready to host the FIBA World Cup this month. During the special PSA forum, Erica D, the local organizing committee's deputy event director, said the remaining 5% will be met on the D-Day. Venues are also ready as arenas to be used were installed with new floors, backboards, and scoreboards. With this, Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas President Al Panlilio is eyeing a 50,000-person gate attendance in the games. 400 buses were also hired to bring spectators from different points to the venues. 52 games will be held in the country while the rest are set on Indonesia and Japan. So we're almost there but it should be noted that that last 5% is similar to the last two minutes of a basketball game. Mm. Meaning, even if it's just 5% of the 40-minute game, it's the most important. Uh, the venues will be, it will be exciting. I mean, in terms of how it looks, and, and it will be very different from, from how, you, how you've seen basketball in the Philippines. So we're really ready in terms of the hotels, in terms of the, the, the transportation requirements, um, in terms of the flight bookings of, of every, everybody. Uh, we're really ready. The vehicles, as I said, talaga uh, handa na kami. The Rain or Shine Alaska Painters remain winless in the Jones Cup in Taiwan. Rain or Shine had a chance to retake the lead but missed the layup with 15 seconds to go against the United Arab Emirates. UAE was able to retrieve the ball and ice the game with clutch free throws. Final score 73 to 71 for UAE. This is the Elasto Painters' third loss in three days after losing to two Chinese Taipei teams over the weekend. Rain or Shine, though, has a chance to finally chalk up a win against Qatar. Pinay golfer Rian Maliksi kicked off her campus tour in the U.S. in search for a school where she can develop herself and her sporting career. The first stop was the University of California in Los Angeles where Women's World No. 1 Lilia Vu won eight individual titles. Team Maliksi says they will next visit Stanford University which is also in California. Further down the list, the 16-year-old will head to the University of Oregon, Virginia and Duke University. 
Maliksi is currently ranked 80th in the world and had finished in the top 10 six times out of 12 tournaments this year. She is expected to spearhead the Philippines Asian Games campaign next month as well as the World Amateur Team Championship in Abu Dhabi in October. We're taking a time out. The game on One News Now will return after a quick break. Stay tuned. You're still watching the game on One News Now. I'm Denise Stan. Thanks for joining us. Brazilian forward Neymar joins the growing list of players transferring to Saudi Arabia after securing a deal with Al Hilal. Reports say Paris Saint Germain agreed on the transfer with a transfer fee of about 90 million euro euros plus add ons. Neymar is said to net 160 million euros in the deal. A separate Reuters report said the 31-year-old footballer had a medical in Paris and is expected to arrive in Riyadh on Wednesday. He is expected to wear the number 10 shirt. Multiple reports link Neymar to a reunion with Barcelona, but the latter's financial issues took its toll. Neymar netted 118 goals and 173 appearances for PSG and was supposed to stay on the French side until 2025. 
Still in football, a New Zealand artist painted murals of legendary women in honor of the FIFA Women's World Cup being co-hosted by the country. More on that in this Reuters video. An Egyptian who lost his left leg in a shark attack is now the Guinness World Record holder for most muscle-ups in one hour. Check out his story in this Reuters video. انا ابقى صريح معاك ما كنتش احلم ابدا ان انا اوصل للرقم اللي انا وصلت له يعني كان تفكيري ان قلت ايه لو عملت 120 ولا 105 بقى كده حلو جدا بس الحمد لله يوم التمت نفسها ويوم المحاوله وبتشجيع من الناس والدعم عرفت اوصل ل 161 عده في الساعه حوالي 6 سنين او 7 سنين حصل لي زي نقطه تغيير كده هو في حياتي ان انا حصل لي هجوم من سمك قرش وبسبب الهجوم ده حصل لي بتر في رجل الشمال فوق الركبه بس دي حاجه من بعدها يعني كانت زي ما تقول نقطه تحول كان الموضوع في الاول كان صعب كان الموضوع كان فيه طبعا جزء منتل زي ما بيقولوا تشالنج كبير ان انا اطلع من حته زي كده ازاي ان انا اطلع من مود الاكتئاب ازاي ان انا اطلع ارجع امارس رياضه تاني دي كانت حاجه صعبه جدا في الاول بس كانت بالنسبة لي نقطة تحول ان انا فعلا اعرف ازاي صحتي النفسية اعرف ان هي احسن منها عن طريق الرياضة او عن طريق اي اي رياضة او اي نشاط بدني زي ما بيقولوا. تسلا باص ايلون ماسك says his planned cage match with fellow multi billionaire Mark Zuckerberg will reportedly be held in Italy. Details on that in this video from Reuters. It's the battle of the billionaires, Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg. The two tech titans will step into the ring for a mixed martial arts cage match to take place in Italy. Crazy? Maybe. Confirmed? Apparently so. On Friday, Musk posted that the event will be live streamed on his social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter, and Zuckerberg's Meta, which includes Facebook and Instagram. The Tesla CEO said the event would have an ancient Rome theme, adding that he spoke to the Prime Minister of Italy and the country's Minister of Culture, and that they have agreed on a, quote, epic location. Shortly afterwards, Italy's culture minister confirmed that he had spoken to Musk about hosting a, quote, large charitable and historically evocative event, but said it would not take place in Rome. The culture minister did not specify what form it would take or when it would be staged. He said proceeds would go to two Italian pediatric hospitals. Musk threw down the gauntlet to Zuckerberg in a June 20th post, saying he was, quote, up for a cage match with his business rival, who was trained in jiu-jitsu. A day later, Zuckerberg, who has posted pictures of jiu-jitsu matches he has won on his company's Instagram page, 
ask Musk to send a location for the proposed throwdown. At least one person is opposed to seeing Musk, the richest man in the world, take on Zuckerberg, the eighth richest. And that is Musk's mother, who earlier this summer posted, quote, don't encourage this match. Get your fill of the latest in sports at onesports.ph. Meantime, the Newsday continues later at 4.30 p.m. I'll see you then. I'm Denise Tan. We are One News. Meanwhile, the FIBA World Cup starts on August 25. Support Gilas, support Team Filipinas. Watch and buy tickets to the biggest sports event of the year. Let us root for our team.